Okay, let's talk about the CSET exam and specifically the multi-subjects uh, math section of the CSET. So if you're watching this video, I'm assuming that you're taking the CSET, which means that you're going to be uh, teaching at some level in the state of California. So congratulations on that. I'm actually from California, so more power to you. It's a beautiful state, but uh, I am a uh, math teacher, middle, middle school, high school math teacher, but um, I, I actually had to take the praxis exam for the states uh, that I uh, taught in. So, um, but whether it's the praxis or the CSAT, all teacher certifica certification exams, and there's different ones depending on what states you are, they're, they're still pretty challenging exams across the board. And if you take a, a look at what uh, type of math is on the CSET, it's pretty challenging, okay? And this is not to be confused with the C-BEST. Now, of course, the C-BEST, you know, is you know, challenging in and of itself, but nowhere near as much as the CSET in terms of uh, mathematics. But um, I want to leave you with something right up front before I forget. I actually offer a CSET uh, math uh, prep course I think is extremely comprehensive. I want to leave a link to uh, that course in the description of this video if you want to check that out. But uh, what I got here is a little kind of pop quiz for you just to kind of see where you're at. It's certainly not um, uh, representative of all the math you need to know for the CSET, but certainly you need to be able to handle a problem like this. So here I have an expression, and what I'd like you to do is to simplify this expression, okay? And while you're doing that, I'd also like you to think about why you need to be able to, or why it's important to simplify this expression. So I guess the, the you know, uh, I didn't write it out, the actual problem, but here it is. What I want you to do is like, hey, why do we need to simplify this? And then how do we simplify it? So if you want to go ahead and try that, maybe pause the video and give it a whirl. Okay, so I'm going to actually go ahead and do this now. So I'm going to answer the uh, the part of the question that is, why do we need to simplify this? Well, what we have here is a fraction, but we have a fraction with a radical in the denominator. Okay, so, but more specifically, we have an irrational number in the denominator. So let's uh, take a look at something a little bit simpler. Let's say I had said 10 and I'm going to divide it by 2. Okay, so this is a rational number and this is a rational number in and of itself. Okay, so I'm dividing a number by a rational number. Okay, so, you know, if you just think about it, you know, it's like a pizza. If I'm going to slice this up in some sort of way, it's like, okay, I'm, I'm slicing it up in some sort of rational way. But if I take a value, let's say 10, now I try to divide it by a number like, say, the square root of 3, well, the square root of 3 is an irrational number. Okay, now what does that mean, right? Well, an irrational number is a non-terminating decimal. It just keeps going on and on and on and on and on, right? Non-repeating and non-terminating. So if I'm going to divide something by something that's not terminating or non-repeating, th that conceptually, you know, is confusing. And mathematically, that's not uh, a way we like to uh, leave expressions like this. So when you have a radical in the, the denominator, we, we, we don't want to leave it that way. Okay, so we call that rationalizing, right? So this particular problem, let's just do this over here, 10 over the square root of 3. We want to rationalize that by uh, doing the following. Okay, we're going to want to go ahead and multiply both the numerator and the denominator by the square root of 3. Okay, now... Just, just think about that when this approach, right? I'm multiplying this expression here by the square root of 3 over the square root of 3. So anything divided by itself is just 1, right? So this is just an identity here. So I'm just taking this and multiplying by 1. So I'm not changing the problem. I'm just rewriting um, how this is going to look by getting rid of the radicals down in the denominator. So, of course, the answer here would be 10 of the square root of 10 times the square root of 3 over 3. Now I have a rational expression with a rational number down in the denominator. So that's the point, uh, uh, the big point here is that you don't want to have expressions where you have irrational values in the denominator. You have to fix that by rationalizing. So hopefully you kind of remember that and if you ace that question, good for you. So now unlike that previous problem, 
I'm going to have to rationalize this expression. So the way I'm going to do that, and I'm not going to turn this into a full lecture here, is I have to use the conjugate, right? So the way this is going to be is I have the square root of 3 plus 1. I'm going to have to multiply this by the square root of 3 minus 1. Okay, it's square root of 3 minus 1. Because this is the expression here, such that when I multiply it by this expression, I can get rid of the square root. Okay, now again, it doesn't make a difference what this is because anything divided by itself is just one big one. Okay, I can have anything I want over here. The whole objective is when I multiply those denominators here that this conjugate gets rid of the irrational uh, value in the denominator. Okay, so now how do we um, actually uh, you know, calculate this out. Well, we have to just kind of treat these as binomials. So let's go to do this down here. Kind of bring you back to multiplying polynomials using the FOIL method. So we have the square root of 3 times the square root of 3, which is just 3, plus the square root of 3 times negative 1. So that's negative square root of 3, plus 1 times the square root of 3, which is the square root of 3. And then we have 1 times a negative 1, which is just a negative 1. So this is going to be 3. Okay, these guys just cancel each other out, minus 1. So that's just equal to 2. Okay, so 2 is what we have in our denominator. Now, there's another way of looking at this. You want to think of your factoring skills. So let's kind of talk about this real quick. Just remember the difference of two squares, right? a squared minus b squared is equal to what? a plus b times a minus b. So if you look at these two guys down here, these two binomials, this product, it fits the pattern of the difference of two squares. So another way you could calculate this denominator is simply take the square root of 3, square it, because that's our a, minus our b value is 1, square that. So the square root of 3 squared is 3 minus uh, 1 squared, which is 1, is 2. Okay, so we still get the two, but we get it, we get it in a more direct manner. So, something you should also be aware about, uh, especially when you're teaching your students, when you're dealing with conjugate, you just use the difference of two squares. So now let's go out and continue on with our numerator. So I have to let's go ahead and do it down here. Just uh, get a little messy. So our numerator is going to be two square root of seven times this binomial here. So it's going to be 2 square root of 7 times radical 3 minus 1. And now what we have to do here is use the distributive property, right? So this would be 2 times the square root of 21 minus 2 times radical 7. So 2 times square root of 21 minus 2 times uh, radical 7 all over 2. Now if you course, if you look here, we can factor out a 2 up here in uh, the numerator, so we could just, well, let's just do it here, just so you can see what's going on. So I can write this this way, 2 square root of 21 minus radical 7 all over 2, and I can get rid of these guys here, and I'm left with this, uh, radical 21 minus radical 7. So that would be the most simplified version of this particular problem. So again, you know, this is kind of a really core algebra skills, you know, definitely algebra one, algebra two, and although there's much more advanced mathematics on the CSAP beyond this, if you don't have this now, then you're not going to really, you know, you're going to have trouble with the more advanced stuff. And I think a lot of uh, students, you know, or uh, folks teaching math or reviewing math, just kind of, um, they don't do the due diligence on reviewing the fundamentals. Okay, so this would be, you know, from my perspective, you know, kind of like fundamental mathematics. And it doesn't make a difference what your math background is. You still got to, in my opinion, respect the level of mathematics that are going on. Yeah, I have a degree in math and a master's degree, and I've been teaching this stuff for many, many years. Guess what? If I'm going to be teaching a lesson on it, I want to make sure that I'm up to speed, I'm fully prepared by reviewing. And that's how you want to treat all this stuff, is you really want to review comprehensively because, you know, not only for the uh, in terms of increasing your chances of passing the CSAT, but you know more importantly, 
you want to be a master of this uh, mathematics if you're going to be teaching it. Okay, you really have to be in command of it, command of it to be the best uh, uh, teacher possible. But anyways, let's go ahead and just wrap this video up. So just a little pop quiz. That's what was the whole purpose of this. Hopefully you got an A plus, but I'll give you an A anyways if you're still watching the video. <laughs> I certainly appreciate that. Again, I have a, a great uh, CSAT math. Uh, um, prep course. I'll leave the link again in the description of the video. I literally have hundreds of videos on my YouTube channel. Many of them will also help you out uh, prepare for the CSAT, so hopefully you'll consider subscribing. And if you enjoyed my video, definitely appreciate a thumbs up. And leave me some feedback. Um, you know, tell me a little bit about your goals. You know, why are you going into mathematics? Have you taught other subjects? Um, have you um, taken the C best? Uh, you know, are you going to be focusing on high school level math. I know that's a uh, different certification. I'm not off the top of my head. Not um, you know, there's a lot of states out there, and every state's a little bit different. But I believe the CSAT also will, uh, depending on what subtest um, goes, will will get you certified to teach um, high school level math. So. Uh, I could be wrong, but anyways, hopefully I'm not misspeaking, but are you going to be teaching high school math, middle school math? I've taught both. They both uh, have their pros and cons. I actually enjoy teaching advanced material, but, you know, I also enjoy teaching uh, those folks at the middle school level. So I um, definitely appreciate your time. I wish you all the best on the CSAT. Believe me when I tell you, those schools out there need great teachers. So, you know, I applaud you for being in the education business. It really, you do really have to be passionate for it. And, um, Unfortunately, a lot of people don't really truly understand what it takes to uh, be a teacher. It's truly a profession and it requires a lot of work. So hopefully this video helped you out. Uh, so I wish you all the best and thanks for watching. Have a great day.